salute them. And I salute you for supporting me. Rebuilding, which is what I did for most of my career, is kind of like grabbing a cat by the tail. And Mark Twain said, there are things that you can learn that you can learn in no other way. And besides getting nicked up, you learn what you have to do to make it. In my time, I chose the road less traveled in coaching. It was just my way. I remember my mother speaking to my father. This old Italian guy said, there's a right way and there's a wrong way, and then John, there's your way. And I guess I was so influenced by that that I have chosen my own way. I've chosen a style that is a little different than the way most collegiate teams play, even back then. But it was a style designed exclusively to eliminate losing. I rarely talked about winning. Rarely focused on it with my words, but my notion was, I think that's because I was fortunate enough to be a high school guy in the Green Bay area and watch Vince Lombardi practice night after night. And I thought, here's a coach, because I knew that I wanted to coach basketball, who has mastered the ability to eliminate defeat. He takes care of everything that's within his control and sort of waits for the other team to lose. And so my approach was simply to build a kind of team defense that was always set and ready, to eliminate bad shots, to take care of the basketball, to not make stupid fouls, to not get too fancy. It was my style, and it received a lot of criticism. Never here, never here, but you gotta go back to Wisconsin. <laughs> because when you do that, you risk failure. If you indeed lose, then all of those particular principles and philosophies come in for some serious criticism. But again, it was the way I thought we could eliminate losing and discover for ourselves that very few teams win, but most teams lose. And if we could stress that to our young men, they would simply be disciplined enough, intelligent enough, that they would not yield in the areas that are easy to yield in. Not go for the home run. Not go for the stupid steal. Not try to make the spectacular thing, but be sound. And that's a habit. It doesn't happen overnight, nor in one practice, but it's a sound it's a form of soundness that is stressed in every drill, in every game. I found in my road less travel that success begins and ends with people. You go no, you go no further than the people you surround yourself with. And so, while talent physically is very attractive, as is great skill, I rate and have never, I don't think, deviated from my notion that character, mental toughness, if you will, is equally important to physical talent or skill. Because in rebuilding a program, you are going to lose. And believe me, we lost here. And I lost at every first step of every program I've been in. And you need people who see the big picture, who understand that there is a better day ahead, and they will indeed stay the course. And you don't get that with those who simply think they need to play immediately, and if they're not successful immediately, it's time to pull out or it's time to go through the motions. And so I'm happy to hear the coaches speak about these young people. 
I hope it's really that way. Because if it is, you're going to enjoy more success than you've ever had. If it isn't, then it's just lip service. Was to somehow, in a bottom line business, to stay true to quality as opposed to quantity. And that is so hard because we're evaluated on the basis of the bottom line. But to seek quality in every single practice, in every address that you make to the team, in all of your evaluations, in what you say to the media, and what stays important to you will ultimately lead to the bottom line, will lead to the quantity. So when you look at a tape with a team, it's easy, if you've won the game, to accept less than quality. And Al McGuire was one of my mentors. And I remember distinctly him saying, never accept in victory what you would not accept in defeat. And so if people take crazy shots when you're 20 games ahead and they feel good about it, how are you going to feel if they take those same shots at the end of a tight game? And so the quality dimension was something I felt was absolutely essential that young people understand from the very beginning. And so practices, games, were evaluated on that basis rather than, okay, let's pursue as many wins as we can and buy some games, let's schedule easily, and let's build a bottom line. You can do that. Some have done it with success. Let's take a bit of a shortcut and let's recruit just talent. Let's raid the JC level. Let's bring kids in here for a year or two. And perhaps it'll work. But it's the long range that we're seeking. It's the big picture. It's the ability, to, the ability to sustain. And when these youngsters are juniors and seniors, the success will come. We experienced that. I had no intention, some of my dear friends know that, of returning to coaching after I retired at Wisconsin. And the last place I wanted to go was a rundown program in Pullman, Wisconsin. <laughs> but with Jim Sturr and Ann McCoy, people who will remain dear to me to my dying days, said, if you'll come, we might give your son a start. And what father wouldn't do that in any field? And so we became Cougars. Well, the hardest thing for me, and it's the hardest part to share, is to know when it's time to end it. I struggled with that at Wisconsin, and I struggled with it here. And most feel, well, now it's time you want to turn the thing over to your son. And that was a part of it. But I would have liked to coach that team maybe and enjoy some success when Kyle Gill and Lowe and Weaver and Harmley and uh, Baines were juniors. So I, it wasn't such an unselfish act. But something more important and probably sadder occurred. And um, the time I discovered to end it Whatever it is you're going to end is when you cannot handle your toughest opponent anymore. And that, of course, is the person you see in the mirror. And my toughest opponent had a very bad temper. Um, one I inherited from my Italian father and mother. And um, that third year was perhaps the most uncomfortable year I had ever experienced in 40 years of coaching. I had a terrible time handling lousy play. And we demonstrated that time and time again. And I found myself losing my temper. 
pretty much on a regular basis. And it was Christmas of that third year, and our whole family, uh, Ann McCoy graciously uh, put into my contract that we could fly our family from Green Bay, our daughter in Green Bay, who has four children, our daughter, our oldest daughter, who's now the head coach at Northern Illinois, and returned from a broken neck after 17 years as a head coach. And of course, Tony was here with his two, Anna, Eli, and his wife, Laurel. And so they were all there, we were sitting around the table. And my granddaughter, Anna, hands me, I carry it to this day, hands me this green construction paper with crayon, as only a five-year-old could print, she says, Papa, I wish you wouldn't get mad at the basketball team. Please control your temper. I love you. Please be happy. Love, Anna. And I'm thinking, if a five-year-old can recognize that I'm out of control, it's time. My toughest opponent, my temper, my desire for perfection, my pride, whatever it is, has simply gotten the best of me. And shortly after that, that I told Jim, I'm done. Give the job to the kid, if you will. And he did. And I know there were some, some hard feelings when Tony left, but what most people don't understand, Tony is really home. Our relatives, all of my relatives, are in the East, including my brother in Washington, D.C., his godparents in Pennsylvania, others in New Jersey, and he played at Charlotte. And so he's more home now than perhaps he even was in Green Bay. And he's very happy. And he's very excited about the Cougars. And he's very excited about being where he is. So I just felt obligated to point that out. But to end, let me just say, in reference to my lost battle against my toughest opponent, I have... Um, I have weighed the words of Psalm 90 that were each given about 70 years, some get 80. And even in the best of times, there's a lot of pain and hardship. But I can say, and I checked with my wife, and she sends her regards to those who know her. I checked with her before I left, and I, and I said, did you like it there? I don't want to say it if you didn't. Did you like it? Did you like it there? Even though it's hard. Even though we're away from me. You know, grew up with them up. I said, yes, I really did like it there. And I asked Tony, did you really like it there? I said, yes, I really did like it there. It was like a 60-59 decision. So I can say, for the Bennett family, the time here, for some, for some of the best years. And for that, I thank you. God bless you.